assalamu alaikum everyone i hope you all are doing great so the course we are going to study is biochemistry the title of the course is uh, human biochemistry and diseases so in this course we will study about diseases related to humans and the underlying mechanism the symptoms the treatment diagnosis as well as pathogenesis so today we will start with a disease known as anthrax the causative agent of anthrax the bacteria that causes anthrax is called as bacillus anthracis so bacillus anthracis is a bacteria and is responsible for causing the deadly disease known as anthrax This bacteria is aerobic in nature which means that it need oxygenated environment in order to grow in order to survive it is gram positive bacteria which means that it gives positive result during gram staining it is rod in shape and these rod shaped bacteria actually assemble together to form the short chain like structures okay it has ability to form endospore so endospore is actually a tough resistant structure which is usually the characteristics of gram positive bacteria in this case this bacillus anthracis produce endospore during unfavorable condition such as lack of nutrient dry weather or during drought in which the bacteria is not capable of uh, you can say it is uh, it is not capable of reproduction or to carry out its normal life processes so when favorable condition returns like uh, when enough nutrients are required for bacteria then it become vegetative it will again reproduce and grow again the next thing is that it is encapsulated which means that this is consider this is a bacteria this is its cell wall okay then around the cell wall thick layer known as capsule is present okay this is capsule this is cell wall so around the capsule around the cell wall a thicker layer known as capsule is present so we'll say this bacteria is encapsulated obligate pathogen which means that it requires a host what it requires a host to fulfill its life cycle to complete its life cycle as you can see in the diagram that this is a bacteria this is another bacteria it is rod in shape and this rod shaped bacteria assemble together to form short chain like structure this is bacteria this is cell wall and additional thicker layer known as capsule is present around the cell wall so the base on root of entry there are three types of bacteria anthrax sorry cutaneous anthrax also known as skin anthrax gastrointestinal anthrax or inhalational or pulmonary anthrax each form can progress to fatal systemic anthrax if left untreated so first of all we'll study about uh, what these roots are So cutaneous anthrax is cutaneous means skin. So during any cut, abrasion, or any wound, any injury, somehow anthrax spores enter into the skin via that open cut, and these spores will enter the lumen of the person, produce its particular toxin proteins. These toxin proteins will be then released into bloodstream. which will study later that how these bacteria produce this toxin protein and how they are uh, they actually release into blood stream and become systemic and how uh, this bacteria causes it so for now uh, just consider that this uh, somehow the anthrax spore enter through the open cut by open cut into the skin and it causes anthrax okay or even a fly, biting fly from infected animal may might carry some spores with it okay it can might carry some spore in its mouth so when it bites human on skin this pores can actually from skin into body which can cause anthrax gastrointestinal anthrax is by ingestion which means that if we consume uncooked meat raw meat 
or uh, or raw meat or uncooked meat that contain anthrax spores so this spores can also enter into human body via ingestion or inhalation if the anthrax spores are present in air and the person inhale the spores the spores can enter into the respiratory tract into the lungs uh, the rest in the alveoli and from that alveoli they may enter into blood and cause anthrax okay so first of all we will study about cutaneous anthrax so cutaneous anthrax as i told you is a skin anthrax which means that as you can see that this anthrax spore enters to the open cut of the person or and it will this is known as cutaneous anthrax it can also be spread by biting insects which carry and grow spore sorry spores anthrax spores so <coughs> So from three to five days of post infection, a small pimple-like structure known as papule form, which after 24 hours become a raised structure, and around the raised structure become ulcerate. Okay, this raised structure will become ulcerate. When this structure dries out, when this structure, this papule dries out, that ulcer dries out. It will convert it into this black painless scar okay black painless scar and around the scar edema occurs inflammation occurs like fluid from blood vessel will leak into tissues this result into edema so in an uncomplicated uncomplicated case of cutaneous anthrax the bacteria will not spread beyond the region so this is the site of infection so if it is not a serious case it is uncomplicated case of cutaneous anthrax and bacteria will not spread from this side to another part of body to another uh, organ of body it will not enter into blood it will remain in that site but if this condition is left untreated if this condition is ignored then about 20 percent of patient will become septic which is very likely to be fatal other type of anthrax is gastrointestinal anthrax which obviously caused by infected raw meat uh, infected raw meat or uncooked meat partially cooked meat so this spores present in the meat enter by esophagus to the stomach it will affect the stomach it will affect the small intestine it will affect the large intestine okay so there are two types of gastrointestinal anthrax one is abdominal anthrax and other one is oroesophageal anthrax abdominal anthrax occur at the lower part of abdomen which include the stomach small intestine and this large okay so the uh, person suffering from abdominal anthrax has the following symptoms he may experience nausea vomiting anorexia fever Increase in acute abdominal pain, bloody diarrhea, septicemia, and death. Okay. Oroesophageal anthrax. The symptoms retain at the throat and esophagus area. Okay. So the symptoms associated with oroesophageal anthrax are sore throat, dysphagia, which means that difficulty in swallowing, fever, cervical lymph adenopathy, which means that lymph nodes that are present near the root. Neck, as we know that lymph nodes are present in the neck area, in the armpit area, and as well as in the groin area. So in this case, oroesophageal anthrax, the lymph node present in the neck area is effective. Okay, so these lymph nodes become enlarged and will lead to cervical lymph adenopathy and obviously edema. Inhalational anthrax, also known as polar anthrax. So the person inhale anthrax spore by air. So the anthrax spores are inhaled. These anthrax spores enter the lung and travel through air spaces. Okay, that is alveoli. And these spores are then trans where they produce its particular toxins. So what are these toxins? How they produce it? We will study in a short. Spores are then transported through the lymph system to glands that lie between the sternum and the spinal column. Where they make deadly toxins. So the resulting from inhalation of bacillus anthrax is, is the inhalational anthrax. Inhalational anthrax, also called as respiratory anthrax, is mainly associated with industrial exposure in textile or tanning industries. So the onset of symptoms usually occurs two to five days of post-exposure. 
Initially, the symptoms are usually non-specific. They are very generalized symptoms, like flu-like symptoms. So the person might think that he is having flu. So these symptoms are mild fever, fatigue, or mild cough. This stage that is flu-like symptoms of this infection lasts about two days, which abruptly ends with onset of acute symptoms. These symptoms are trouble breathing, fever, tachycardia, which means that when the person is having rest, it is at rest, his heart beat faster than normal. Cyanosis, which means that appearance of a blue or purplish coloration in skin. As you can see in the figure, in the picture, that uh, the nails and the fingers of a person has turned blue or purple, purplish or bluish. Pleural effusion is it is a condition in which excess fluid build up around the lungs. As the, in this part of the lung, excess fluid build up in the lung, and this is known as pleural. pleural Effusion. These symptoms continue to worsen and they eventually lead to coma and death. The person might experience meningitis or swelling of membrane around the brain and spinal cord. It also occurs in 50% of bacteria, sorry, 50% of patients who contract this form of disease. So how this bacteria enter? How this pathogenic bacteria enter? human body. So there are two mode of entry, there are two model of infection actually. The first one is jailbreak model of infection and the second one we are going to study is Trojan horse model of infection. First we will study jailbreak method. So in jailbreak method somehow from one of the three ways like cutaneously or by ingestion or by inhalation Spore of bacillus anthracis enter into lumina of person. It enters into lumina of our body. And in the lumina, these spores will germinate to produce a vegetative bacteria. This vegetative bacteria means that it is capable of producing toxins and other proteins, enzymes, and it is surrounded by a capsule. Okay, so the spores via inhalation, ingestion or via skin cutaneously through cut, through injury, enters into lumina of person where the spores uh, own, own the epithelial endothelial barrier become vegetative and these vegetative bacteria will produce uh, toxins or protein and protease enzyme. So once these toxins and protease enzyme, the enough of the toxin and protease enzyme to produce this protease enzyme will break down the epithelial endothelial barrier. As you can see that the epithelial endothelial barrier is broken down, the areas of infected inflammation will occur. So this vegetative bacteria will enter, it will invade the epithelial endothelial barrier and will enter into the host. So with the help of lymph fluid, with the help of lymph flow this bacteria will enter into lymph node okay so this bacteria does not really require any carrier protein or any other cell like phagocyte cells to transfer it or to take it from this barrier this side to lymph node so once this bacteria once this bacteria enter into lymph node it will uh, it will produce more bacteria okay it will produce more toxin it will produce more protein inside and once enough of these will be produced, it will compromise the integrity, it will compromise the structural integrity of lymph nodes. So once the structural integrity of lymph node is compromised, it is lost, then this bacteria, these bacteria will leave the lymph nodes and they will enter into blood. Okay. Once they enter into blood, they will cause bacteremia and death of person. So this is the jailbreak method by which the bacillus anthracis spores enters into host cell. The other method is Trojan horse method. Okay. So in this method, the spores somehow one of the three ways like from cutaneously inhalation or ingestion enters into the lumina person. 
so these pores will directly invade epithelial endothelial barrier it will directly cross the epithelial endothelial barrier okay it does not require to be to produce a vegetative bacteria to produce toxins to produce proteins enzyme and then to break down the epithelial endothelial barrier that we have just studied okay then this pore in trojan horse model this pore will directly enter it will directly invade epithelial endothelial barrier it will enter the host cell or with the help of phagocytic cells the phagocytes might ingest the spores and when they cross this barrier they will enter into lymph node okay so in this case phagocytic cell or directly spore will enter into it and in lymph node these spores will germinate okay in previous model the spores germinate on the surface of epithelial epithelial barrier but in this case it will germinate inside of lymph node so inside of lymph node when this pores germinate it then it will produce toxins it will produce toxin proteins which toxin proteins and how toxin proteins proteins are produced we will study it later and the proteins in life when enough of these are produced the structural integrity will be lost lymph node will loss lose its structural integrity due to which it will leave the lymph node and enter into blood which will lead to bacteremia and death of individual death of patient because this infection has not been systemic so what causes bacillus anthracis bacteria to be a virulent bacteria So the capsule is the cause of virulence of bacteria, and as well as the protein exotoxins, protein toxins produced by bacteria are the major virulence factor of this bacteria. Okay. So the capsule contain poly deuterotamic acid, whereas the three component which they produce are three component of protein exotoxin are protective antigen PA. Its size is 83 kilodalton. Lethal factor 90 kilodaltons and edema factor EF 89 kilodalton. So note that this bacteria contain two plasmids. One is PXO1 and the other one is PXO2. PXO1 contain genes which code for production of this toxin proteins, whereas PXO2 contain enzymes which are responsible for formation of capsule. Okay, it will produce capsule. PXO1 will produce exotoxins proteins. So two will produce capsule. So if one of these caps plasmid are lost, like if PXO one is lost, protective antigen lethal factor edema factor that protein and the toxin will not be produced. The bacteria will no more be virulent. If PXO two is lost, then capsule will not form. If capsule will not form, then again it will lose its virulence. Okay. So the receptor of these protective protein lethal factor edema factor that are exotoxin are is anthrax toxin receptor. So this is a. Uh, This is the pathogenic pathway. Okay, this is bacteria that is Bacillus anthracis. It produces three toxin protein that is protective antigen PA, lethal factor LF, and edema factor EF. The receptor of these toxin proteins is anthrax toxin receptor, which is named as ATR. It is present on the surface of cell. So first of all, only protective antigen PA will bind. Once PA will bind, a class of proteins known as furin will come and it will cleave the amino terminal of 20 kilodalton segment from this PA protective antigen toxin. Whereas remaining 63 kilodalton segment will remain attached to ATR. This PA sixty three will then heptamerize, like 
six other units of this PS3 will bind together with six other, as you can see, six other radial receptors to form a PA heptamer. Hepta means seven, so it will contain seven PS3 molecules. Okay. Once this heptamer is formed, then uh, three of the lethal factor and the DMA factor will bind to this PA heptamer. That this whole structure, this whole complex will be endocytosed by cell. And in endocytosis by cell, the receptor will be dissociated. The ATR receptor will be dissociated and it will form a pore. PA pore will formation occur inside the endosome. Then through this pore, it will produce an exotoxin that is edema factor and lethal factor. Edema factor when binds with the PA will lead to edema toxin lethal vector binds with pa to form lethal toxin so edema factor edema toxin is called mutilin dependent adenylase cyclic enzyme and it will catalyze the conversion of atp to cyclic amp so the level of cyclic amp will be higher when the level of ef release will be higher okay once the level of cyclic AMP in the cell increases, that it will not let the phagocyte, it will not let the neutrophils to engulf this bacteria, which means that it is protecting the bacteria. This edema factor produces edema toxin, which will inhibit the phagocyte loss of the bacteria. Okay? The other is the lethal factor. Lethal factor will actually cleave the MAP case. Okay? I'm sorry for disturbance. So where we were. Okay, the lethal factor will cleave this map KK. So when this map KK is cleaved, as it is involved in cell survival signal, it protects the cell from apoptosis. It also regulates the cytokine production, uh, production as well as inflammatory remediators. So once this map KK is cleaved, then survival signals will be lost. When the survival signals will be lost, apoptosis will take place. So when this map KK will be converted into map K due to which the cytokine production increases. Okay. So this cytokine production uh, will increase and it will also increase the level of inflammatory mediators, which will ultimately lead to cell death. So the overproduction of the uh, cytokines, these cytokines include TNF alpha and IL on beta, which will lead to lysis of macrophages. Rapid release of these inflammatory mediators also contribute to sudden death. That is characteristics of anthrax. So this is a zinc dependent protein enzyme. LF is a zinc dependent protein enzyme. And MAP-KK means that it is mitogen activated protein kinase kinase. Okay. Whereas LF is calmudulin dependent adenylate cyclase enzyme. Okay. So this is another simple pathway that is the anthrax toxin produce uh toxin protective antigen. Edema factor, lethal factor, they bind to its receptor. Once it binds to an enzyme gum, it will leave some other fragment that is first PA20. The remaining CC3 will remain attached to the receptor. This, uh, the larger segment will then heptamerize and form this complex PA heptamer. And then this PA heptamer with these three toxic subunit bind, and this uh, pore will be engulfed by endosome, and then in endosome, mature pore will form, and through that pore, the toxins will be released into cytosol.
And same, uh, this is again, this is a uh, bacteria which uses its toxin. This is ATR receptor furin will leave the segment. PA20 uh, remaining 63 will remain attached. This will heptamerize to form uh, PA heptamer. And with this heptamer, EF and LF will bind. This will endosome. In the bandosome, it produce 4. EF edema, that will produce edema toxin. Lethal that will produce lethal toxin. It is zinc dependent. It is calmodulin independent. It is a laser time. Okay, uh, so um, it will catalyze the conversion of cyclic AMP to ATP to cyclic AMP. Sorry, the level of cyclic AMP increases as the level of EF increases, which will also lead to edema. So uh, it will also decrease the production of PAP case due to which uh, necrosis and hypoxia occur. Diagnosis, clinical diagnosis of anthrax is performed by first culturing the skin layers, blood or cerebral spinal fluid and then the gram staining the bacteria. As we know that the bacteria is gram positive, so if the gram staining is positive, which means, means that the bacteria is bacillus anthracis. So the disease is indicated by visualization of large gram positive bacilli form short chains, either they form short chains or not. Nowadays, more advanced tests are used uh, for the diagnosis. What are these tests we will not discuss here. Prevention is will avoid exposure, immunization. Uh, we will have vaccines and the combination of antibiotic for 60 days. That it, that, that's it for anthrax. I hope you will like it. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.